Hi everyone, my name is Patricia Valdivinos, or I go by Patty, Department of the Los Angeles Public Library. And I'm Steve Orozco, the Library Assistant for the Exploration and Creativity Department. We're here to introduce today's LMA program, Introduction to Writing for Sketch Comedy, Write Like SNL. And there's Chris on screen too. We're giving you a peep of who he is, but first we have to introduce him to Chris. So uh, we want to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, our Library Foundation, and our behind the scenes staff for helping bring the LA Made programs to you virtually. LA Made focuses on the diverse landscape of Los Angeles, highlighting the immense artistic and performance talent that has developed in the course of the city's eclectic history. If you would like to see more of our amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org slash events, and for our LA Made program specifically, visit LA, lapl.org slash LA Made. Our website also has blog posts that highlight the library's diverse resources and upcoming programs. Also, do not miss our next LA Made programs. We are excited to have Green Girl Leah join us on Thursday, June 17th at 4 p.m. Leah is, inter is an intersectional environmental activist and eco communicator based in Southern California. She's passionate about advocating for and exploring the relationship between social justice and environmentalism. Then on Thursday, June 24th at 4 p.m., we continue to celebrate LGBTQIA Pride Month with Gaijin AF, the hit sold variety show that ran for a year at the Up Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in Hollywood before the collapse of modern society. A branch of the reowned Asian AF, Gaijin AF features the best of LGBTQ plus Asian Americans in entertainment. For this one time only event, a panel of comedians will host special guests for some frivolity at the virtual round table. Let's celebrate Pride Month and spill the green tea. And now for what we've all been waiting for, I'm very excited to introduce today's LA Made program with Chris Renfro, an LA based actor, writer, comedian, and home baker. Today, Chris will be presenting the basics of sketch comedy, specifically using game to write short comedic scenes like you might see on SNL, Mad TV, and other late night shows. Uh, you will be exposed to different styles of sketch comedy and all their forms. No prior sketch uh, writing or comedy experience is necessary. The only requirement for this is a desire to write and learn. Um, Note, some of the video clips shared in this presentation have some explicit language, which will remind viewers before each video. Uh, Renfro has written and performed for, with the Upright Citizens Brigade, Second City, Smosh, College Humor, Dropout, and the CBS Diversity Showcase. On TV, you've seen him on Man with a Plan, Reno 911, and more. He curr he's currently teaching sketch comedy writing at Improv Hawaii. To learn more about Chris, you can visit chrisrenfro.com or follow him on Instagram and Twitter at The Meat Skeleton. Welcome, Chris. Hi. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. You know what's really weird? Being introduced and watching yourself be introduced. <laughs> <laughs> we, we forgot the whole part of uh, hiding you, uh, but it's okay. You know, it's improv. We're going with it from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, you know, early on, I saw that I was, I was on stage when I shouldn't have been, and you know what? That's my fault. <laughs> no. Yeah, if you would have just turned to the to the left of the stage, you would have just been okay. No, just just yeah. hide your camera. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just pop up on the screen whenever. I know. Yeah. Um, now, yeah, I've actually written a sketch, and this is part of it. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're really excited to have you here and uh, learn all all about uh, well, what is it? What a skit? I know this. I know what we're introducing. <laughs> Thank All you, right. thank you. Uh, I mean, thank you for uh, everyone at the LA Public Library for having me. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Patty. Um, could we just jump straight into it? Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Chris. What I'm pre uh, presenting today is a, um, uh, a sort of a condensed version of the six week course that I teach at Improv Hawaii. It's um, just the uh, introduction to the basics of sketch comedy writing. While we probably, we won't be doing any writing today, the hopes uh, is that we walk out of this one hour presentation and hopefully it is one hour, there's a lot to get through. We walk out of here with um, understanding um, the foundations of sketch comedy so that when you go out and watch Saturday Night Live or Matt TV or even uh, the late shows like Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon um, that you can start seeing like how these things are created and how there's actually a formula 
involved that a lot of people are following and demystify how this niche part of writing for TV, um, let's demystify some of that process. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Patty and I are gonna play um, uh, roles as voices of God in the yeah. background. So we'll be removing ourselves. That way uh, you can take over the full screen. We don't wanna upstage, yes. you know. We're not part of this kid, but you'll hear no. our voices. So if you hear us, it's us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And All please, right. this is uh, very, uh, I'd like to keep it very lax. So if, uh, if anyone has any questions, please pop up on screen. Or if you can't pop up on screen, just write the questions in the chat. Um, I'm not going to have a place specifically designated for questions, so I would just love to answer them throughout. There's a lot of probably new information, so it's better that I answer it as the questions come. So please just ask ask them as they arise. There are no dumb questions. Yeah, cool. and then viewers can put it in the comment or chat box, depending on if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. So as Chris said, just send all the questions. All right, so let, uh, we'll see you in the pit. Let me add the... I'm writing solo soon. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Now I'm in control. Okay. Watch. Watch me burn. <laughs> okay. So this is the introduction to sketch comedy. I'm Chris Renfro. My pronouns are he and they. Um, I prefer they, but if you use T, I won't correct you. Um, we only have probably 45, 50 minutes to get through a really. Um, a really good chunk of information. So let's just start out by watching a sketch comedy video. So we're all on the same page about what we're doing here today. So let's go and watch the argument clinic um, by the BBC's Monty Python. Great. And that was the argument clinic by Monty Python. Let's go to the next slide. A sketch is a comedic exploration of a concept, character, or situation as quoted by literally just Wikipedia. So let's get on the same page about what a sketch is and is not. Um, you might be familiar with stand-up comedy, probably is uh, most people's um, uh, first thought when they think about comedy. Um, sketch is, is not stand-up. Stand-up is one, person one person's idea kind of riffing with an audience, whereas a sketch is a pre-written, um, rehearsed, uh, uh, form almost akin to a stage show that can or cannot be filmed. It's not usually improvised, though improv can be a way into discovering a sketch and be in the process of writing a sketch. Um, improv is completely made up on the spot and lives only in that moment. And what sketch definitely is not, can we go to the next slide? It's not a skit. So there is a differentiation between sketch and skit. And I think um, a lot of people use them interchangeable, uh, interchangeably, and they're not. So a skit is something that you might see in uh, like a high school English class. We probably all did this, uh, where uh, a teacher might assign you uh, to to like pretend to be Romeo and Juliet uh, in modern times, and you have ten minutes to do it, and kind of your only job is to make the class. Um, not fall asleep or something, or it's something that an ASB might do to get you excited for spirit week, right? But it's usually not written down. It's not super rehearsed. Um, it usually only explores one, uh, one comedic idea, if that. I know a lot of my skits in high school were not funny. Um, but the hope is that a sketch has one really thought out idea that moves on for uh, the length of a full scene, three to five pages. Um, and then interweave several, um, we'll call them sub games or smaller jokes along the way to keep things interesting. Um, these jokes heighten and they get crazier or more insane or more ludicrous as, uh, as time goes on to, to, to give a sense of movement. Whereas a skit sort of lives in one singular moment. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So let's talk about the anatomy of a sketch. Um, so there are, I had probably unlimited approaches to writing sketch comedy, and we're only gonna focus on one today. And that approach is um, called GAME. GAME was cultivated by um, the UCB, the Upright Citizens Brigade, Upright Citizens Brigade and the IO Theater Improv Olympic in Chicago um, uh, with Del Close at the helm. Um, and what GAME does, it's, um, it focuses on one unusual repeatable habit or idea 
and uses that repeatable habit throughout the sketch. Um, and with this in mind, we can sort of plug it into almost a formula. And I'm gonna show us three ways to look at this formula that hopefully um, one of them uh, might resonate with you. Um, and as we look at videos moving forward today, hopefully you'll be able to see this formula in all of the sketches. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So here's the um, here's the wacky version of the formula, straight up. This is um, this formula is me having fun in um, in Keynote and MS Paint. I like colors, but here we go. So uh, we'll talk about all these words uh, moving forward, but let's let's go in order. So first, every sketch is going to start out with something called a base reality. Um, a base reality is just a reality, agree an agreed upon reality that everyone. Uh, um, inhabits. So a base reality could be something that we all live in, like uh, that we're all uh, accustomed to uh, somewhere like uh, at the LA library or at a high school, but it could also be something like aliens on Mars. But a base reality is just a reality that we're all agreeing to believe in at the start of a sketch. Then the second component is the game drop. That's the first time uh, the unusual repeatable thing is introduced in a sketch, um, which we'll talk about later. That game drop corresponds with something called a first beat. Um, there are typically three beats in a sketch. Um, three establishes a pattern, and patterns are inherently funny to people. We like we like patterns. We like watching patterns break. Um, it's something that is innate to all of us. So once we get into first beats, there's something called exploration. We we kind of explore the philosophy and the jokes that were dropped in that first beat. Once we're done exploring, we go into the second beat, which is a heightening version of the first joke, right? So we're just ex uh, we're introducing a second joke. Think of that second beat as a second joke, um, a repeat of the unusual thing. Then we just keep repeating this process. We explore it. Then we go to a misdirection, which is optional, which we'll talk about later. We go into a third beat, which is another repeat of the unusual thing, just heightened. Then we explore one last time, usually very quick, and then we black out, which means end of sketch, end. Um, let us um, go to the next slide. Let's look at this in a different way. So we could think of it also like the structure of a paragraph or really more like an essay. So when you're writing out sketches, they are maybe four or five pages long, or if you're on Saturday Night Live, they could be up to seven or eight pages long. Um, but they're all pretty much structured in this way. Think of it, the topic sentence is your base reality, the thesis that we're gonna explore in this essay or the game, the unusual thing. Then we need paragraphs um, supporting this argument. Um, supporting detail one, first beat, explore, explore, explore. Supporting detail two, the second beat, explore, explore, explore. Supporting detail three or the, or the third, third paragraph, uh, explore, 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 until we get into a final conclusion, a coherent argument um, about this weird, unusual thing, a philosophy, a behavior, and we black it out at its hopefully funniest moment. Let's look at another way that we can think about um, the structure of a sketch. Uh, next slide, please. We can think about, uh, think about it in terms of the structure of like a modern pop song. Um, this one isn't 100% um, one to one ratio, but it's, it's very close. So the intro to the song is the base reality. It's welcoming us into this universe so we understand uh, the tone of the song or the tone of the sketch. Then we get into that first verse, which is that game drop, right? Where we're understanding like, oh, this is the point of view of this song. Then we explore with that chorus. We're having fun with it. We go back to the verse, something changes just slightly, but it's still a recognizable verse, right? Then we explore again with the chorus, explore, 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 it's fun. That bridge, right? It's slightly different than the rest of the song, but still kind of feels like it fits somehow. That's the misdirect, right? We want to break the established pattern. Just to give um, 
give the audience a rest from the game, right? We don't want the audience to get ahead of us in sketch comedy, because when the audience is ahead of us, things aren't funny. Things are funny when they're surprising. So a misdirect is a surprise for the audience. We also call it resting the game for the audience. Then we quickly move on to the third game move, that last chorus with a bit of exploration, and it quickly moves into our blackout. Um, in this example, um, I guess the song isn't one of those songs where it kind of just fades out. So just, just pretend it's one of those songs that ends really quickly. Um, let's go on to the next slide. Let's actually, um, let's dissect uh, some of these words right now. I've been using them now. Let's try to understand what they are. These are the central components of uh, uh, most sketches. I won't say any sketch, but most sketches. And this is, um, they're really just vocab words. I'm trying to make this not feel like an English class, but sometimes it has to be. These are vocab words. Um, next slide. So we've talked about base reality. Let me pull this up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Base reality. So what do we want to know in a base reality? This is the agreed, up, agreed upon reality in which uh, the sketch lives. There are, are a few questions that we need answered in this base reality before we move on to that next step. And those things are who is involved. We want to know exactly who's involved and how they feel about each other. What are they doing and how do they feel about that? Where are we specifically? Is that the LA Public Library? Is that on the moon? Is that in the middle of the earth? Is it um, inside of a tiny, tiny clock? Any of these things could be a base reality. It doesn't have to resemble our world, though oftentimes it does. But it just, we need to agree upon what world we're inhabiting. Um, oh, and something I didn't, um, add on this slide, we need to know why we're here. Why are we watching the action of this sketch right now? This is either, for sketch comedy, this is either the very first time something is happening, so we're watching everyone watch a behavior or experience something weird for the very first time, or this is like the thousandth time this weird behavior is happening and we're gonna watch people just become completely tired of it, right? So it's usually one or the other. Either people are discovering this weird habit for the very first time and the sketch is about watching them uh, unpack everything, or uh, it's about that like really annoying person at work that uh, chews way too loudly and you're fed up with it and it's time to, uh, it, it, it's time to really hash it out, right? Um, these are all the agreed upon things that we need in the base reality. And usually we find out all of this in the first five lines of a sketch. Um, if we're watching Saturday Night Live, we'll find this all out in the first 15 seconds. So when you're watching, um, when you're watching sketches today, we'll have, I have probably five or six more sketches. Um, I want you to keep an eye out for Who's involved? What's the, uh, what are they doing? Where are they? Um, how do they feel about all of that? And why are we watching this? Is this the first time or the thousandth time? Excuse me, next slide. So the game, what we're focusing on here. The game is the unusual and repeatable thing about a scene. And that is only in reference to the base reality. So we can't discover a game or the funny thing about a scene if we can't agree about what the base reality or the agreed upon terms are, right? So once we have the agreed upon terms, base reality, the game is gonna um, show itself in the form of something called a game drop, which is uh, when the first unusual thing happens. It, it shows itself in the change of tempo. It shows itself in the form of conflict. It shows itself uh, in the form of confusion. It's the first big question that's asked in any scene that we're going to attempt to answer or unpack for the next four minutes. Um, and there is no better way to try to figure out what game is than just watching. Um, so let's go on to the next slide. So, we're going to watch a video here, and what I want you to watch out for is to yourself, with yourself, think who's involved, 
What are they doing? Where are we specifically? How do we feel about each other? And why are we here? Is this the first time or the thousandth time? So all that is the base reality. And then think about what the game is. What is the unusual behavior? What's, what's the weird behavior going on here? So let's play this video. Um, uh, what you may or may not have seen was that Beyonce decides she wants to go straight for the hottest wing first um, and, uh, and then quickly discovers that it may have been way too hot for her. Now, n up to this point, that, there are still no technically weird things going on. These could all be things that we see in our real life. Like uh, there's nothing weird about her wanting to go for the hottest wing that is feasibly a, a behavior that any of us could exhibit, just being a little too confident. Um, what is unusual is that she decides she wants to keep going with their interview despite the fact that she uh, she starts sweating profusely. She, is, uh, it, she begins raining down with water. The unusual behavior is that despite the fact that she is in pain and uh, obviously unwell, she must continue this interview uh, and not, oh, and I should add, not drink milk because she has Beyonce Knowles and what would it look like if Beyonce drank milk on camera? That's the unusual behavior. That is more specific. Um, uh, let's go on to the next slide. <clears throat> beats. So the, the beats, comprise the three sections or the the meat of the sketch, right? Discovered through heightening. Heightening means more progressively, more unusual, larger events, um, which hopefully we'll be able to see in an upcoming video. Um, uh, let's go on to the next slide, please. Exploration. This is the uh, process of unpacking large bits of information in a logical way. Right, so this is where we get to watch um, the character or the weird person um, unpack, uh, uh, the character or the weird person do their unusual behavior and have someone called the voice of reason or the audience conduit sort of unpack why they're behaving that way, right? So in the very first sketch um, of the Monty Python, the argument clinic, the unusual people are the people that work there. Right, we're unfamiliar with uh, a clinic where you can go and pay people to argue with them. And our, our voice of reason was the man that was there to our paying to argue uh, and asking, uh, like, wait, wait, is this an argument? How does this work? Sort of asking the logical questions um, that we ourselves, as an audience member, might be asking ourselves in the hot ones with Beyonce Saturday Night Live sketch, the unusual person was Beyonce Knowles and her um, insisting that she eat the hot wings and not drink milk, where the straight man, voice of reason, audience conduit person was the host, right? And he, uh, he helps the exploration process by asking, are you sure you don't wanna move forward? Beyonce Knowles Carter, are you okay? Um, uh, and that's how we loosely describe exploration. Can we go to the next slides, please? Heightening, the process by which the action gets progressively more and more absurd as time goes on. Um, that's sort of self-explanatory. Um, let us try to, can we go to the next slide? Um, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that this one is going to be dinged on YouTube. Um, okay, so it seems like we're getting dinged for that. Um, I don't think so, but I don't know if we want to risk it. Okay. Um, but I react the same way when my ice cream falls, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, I guess for people watching this stream in the future, they can pause this video and you could just search this, watch I'm it gonna... and come back, right? Yes. Um, okay, so what we see in there, um, the base reality of this scene is uh, a woman who just got her ice cream and drops it onto the ground, something that we can, uh, oh yeah, Patty's saying that you could also link it in the chat. Yeah, that would be great, Patty, thank you. Um, link to these videos in the chat. Um, 
Yeah, so the base reality is uh, who's involved, um, a, a woman who just bought the ice cream, what is she doing? She's about to have her ice cream, but she just dropped it on the ground. Where is she? Presumably in the park. Um, and uh, why are we watching this? Uh, this is the first time we're seeing this woman go through this, presumably because the sketch goes on and we see her, um, we see the ice cream being taken away in an ambulance as if she just watched a loved one pass away, um, which is why the song, How to Save a Life is playing along. Uh, it's showing the absurdity of the feeling of losing an ice cream cone. It goes on to her finding true love, um, but still thinking about that ice cream cone. She moves on to have a child and that child goes off to college, but she's still thinking about that ice cream cone um, uh, until the very end where she passes away uh, and she's still thinking about that ice cream cone. And she finally is reunited with the love of her life in ice cream cone in heaven. And they do a little interpretive dance, sort of jazz Broadway thing until um, the ice cream cone embodied in a human form drops uh, a, a glass of champagne and the cycle continues as the angel ice cream cone mourns for the fallen champagne and how to save a life starts again. And this infinite loop of uh, of mourning begins. Um, the, the repeatable thing is just like, how absurd can we treat um, the loss of uh, an inanimate object, right? Um, can we go on to the next slide? Uh, an important component, the one of the most important components in writing a sketch is philosophy, which is a character set of beliefs, which almost always goes incongruous to the base reality. Sometimes there are some sketches where everyone is sort of wild and fantastical. And we just, um, as an audience, um, uh, maintain our own views about the world and just understand that we're just watching um, silly people be silly. But a lot of the times we have a, a grounded set of individuals and one person who has an illogical sense, uh, uh, set of beliefs that we're gonna watch them try to justify. Um, can we go on to the next slide, please? Which leads us to justification, how a character explains their behavior, usually through the philosophy and history. Um, if you've taken improv, um, you probably know that they don't usually like to uh, involve the word history, they usually, um, keep it to philosophy, but in sketch, having history can be fun. We can talk about um, like an old uh, Salton seafarer on the docks talking about 20 years ago, uh, I lost an ice cream cone in, uh, in a park and I haven't stopped thinking about her since. I don't know what accent that was, um, but history can be fun in sketch. Um, can we go on to the next slide? I don't know if this is gonna work. Do I think there's music? No, but should we try it? Who who uh, who runs this? Which what's the platform that this one? It's Netflix. Is it Netflix? This I think you should Netflix. Yes. Uh, there is no music. I, uh, <laughs> we'll get dinged. Yeah, yeah, it would probably get dig. Is there any way you could describe it? And we'll put it in the in the ch in the chat so people can watch it. Yeah, totally. From now on, we'll just uh, we'll just uh, talk about it in terms of um, people pausing the video, watching it, and then coming back to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so when you're watching this video, I want you to look out for um, philosophy and justification um, um, of the main character. The main character be being the man, Will Forte. So we will pause here and come back momentarily. Okay, and we're back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so in this, the philosophy of the character, Will Forte, the man, uh, we join a, a couple on an airplane um, and they're going off to their honeymoon. Come in to sit next to them is this old, scary, um, sort of horror movie-esque man who is really just too up in their grill. 
um, and is questioning them too much. And then it, we come to find out that this man knows the um, the new the new husband, right? Um, and he says, uh, "20 some years ago, I was on a plane uh, going somewhere fun, and a baby started crying halfway through the flight and never shut up. And you know who that baby was? It was you. And now I finally exact uh, my revenge by getting on this flight next to you. And now I'm gonna cry for the entire flight. And then we watch an old man cry at the top of his lungs on an airplane <laughs> next to this." man who used to be a baby 20 some years ago. So the philosophy here is you ruined my life or you ruined my flight, I'm gonna ruin your flight, even if that takes me 20 something years. The justification for that is that that flight ruined his vacation so much that it destroyed the trajectory uh, of the happiness of his life. Right, and so together with philosophy, uh, this illogical philosophy and justification, we can come to this sketch where this man was so scorned he had to dig in the trash, find uh, airline tickets to know exactly what seat this man who used to be a baby um, was going to be sat in, so he could get the seat right next to him, so he could cry on his flight to his honeymoon. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. We're gonna go um, other important concepts. And you know what this is? It's just more vocab words. This slide was just here for me to break up the vocab words, really. <laughs> next slide. Um, the rule of three is important in um, all comedy. It's going back to what I said earlier, like humans just naturally want to see a pattern, right? And uh, jokes, uh, really do come in threes. Um, that's why we talk about these sketches having three beats. Um, we want to, because uh, if we had two beats, that could be a coincidence. Three beats um, fills out a pattern of events. Um, there's also something called the rule of 36, um, also called the rule of 49 or 62. It's a really arbitrary number, but it's the thought that um, Things are really funny at three beats, even at four beats, and then there's a diminishing return for the subsequent 10 beats. If you kept, uh, if I kept saying the joke of um, um, or that orange you glad, I didn't say banana, that joke that we probably all know, it was probably fun the very first time we heard it in third grade, right? And then the next time we heard it, not so funny. Next time we heard it, even less funny, even less funny, even till now, even less funny. But if I kept at it and just for the next 10 minutes kept telling that one joke, eventually we would all laugh. It wouldn't be because we were surprised. Um, we would be laughing at the absurdity of the commitment now. And that's the rule of 36. Whereas the rule of three uh, is, um, uh, the element of surprise. The rule of 36 is the element of commitment. Um, uh, oh, can we see that comedy sketches are more difficult to come up with than it looks? Yeah, uh, there's a lot to it. There are a lot more components. Um, it is a lot of work to come up with something so silly. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, well, we already talked about pattern. Um, we have pattern in sketch comedy so that we can establish and break expectation. Can we go to the next slide, please? A tool, an important tool that we use as comedians, improvisers, and sketch writers um, is the thought process of if, then. Uh, and by that, I mean, if this thing is true, then what else is true? So, um, Let's think about the example of how to save a life, the woman who lost her ice cream cone. Um, if I'm treating the loss of my ice cream cone like the loss of a loved one, then that means I will probably mourn them for the rest of my life. Uh, uh, what are other examples? Oh, the argument clinic. If there is a room where I can go to argue with someone, then there must be a room where someone 
inflicts pain on me, which uh, if you, there are versions of that sketch where that room exists. Um, what other sketches? I wanna make sure. A hot one with Beyonce. If Beyonce starts sweating uh, from hot sauce that is way too hot, then eventually someone is going to have to snatch her wig off, which she is not gonna like. Um, Beyonce Knowles is Beyonce knows. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's go on to the next slide, please. And you know what? It's another dang video. And you know what? The whole thing is music. So we will not be watching it right now, but you can pause your screen in the future, not on this live stream. Um, you can pause it, go watch The Basic Ball. And I think we have the link right down here. Um, the Basic Ball on a Black Lady Sketch Show, which, uh, which perfectly follows the rule of three. It is all about pattern the sketch and it's all about if then. Um, so I'm gonna, for the purpose of future stream, say let's pause right here and go watch that video. And we are back. Okay, so what you watched in that video was uh, a turn on uh, ball culture, which is um, happy pride month, uh, like an underground queer scene where, um, uh, uh, black and brown people could sort of live out their fantasy. Uh, if you've seen uh, like RuPaul's Drag Race or uh, Legendary on HBO, those are like aspects of what ball culture um, can be. Um, and so in these balls, people walk down uh, and present sort of like costumes, what are essentially costumes, right? But they're usually things like um, opulence, being rich, um, uh, executive realness, kind of inhabiting these things that queer people, um, uh, queer, especially trans, uh, 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 trans women and uh, people of color, were not typically afforded. So it was like a fun place where people got to be accepted and play pretend and be re rewarded for it. But how we change it here in the basic ball is watching these people dress up in basic attire. Uh, uh, I believe the first beat is uh, depression realness, right? We're watching people just be like, put on their best uh, depressed garb. Um, if, uh, if depressed realness is uh, a category then, um, and I can't think of the rest of the categories just off the top of my head right now, but then these other basic categories must be true, right? This is just a tool to help you in your writing process, the if then. It's not something that you'll ever see a character say in a sketch, probably. You're not gonna watch Beyonce say, well, if it's true that my hair is sweating right now, then it must be true that I've gotta use the bathroom. Um, it's really just a tool for the sketch writer to be using. Um, can we go on to the next slide, please? You know what, now looking at the time, it's probably best that we didn't watch those videos. Uh, we're coming up on time. <laughs> um, the character, so we've talked about this, um, the character, not to be confused with just any old character, the character is the unusual person in the scene, the, uh, the, the odd one out, the weirdo. Um, if we're talking about um, how to save a life, the, the ice cream cone one, the character is the woman, the main character, right? She's the, she's the one exhibiting behavior that goes um, tangential to the rest of the world. Uh, if we're talking about, um, uh, the argument clinic, the unusual people are the people that work at the argument clinic and uh, uh, yeah, the, the people that work at the argument clinic. Um, let's go on to the next slide. Now the scene partner of the character is the voice of reason, also known as the straight man, which is an outdated term, but you might hear people use it. Um, you might hear people just call it the logic person or the audience conduit. This person's job in a sketch is just to poke bubbles um, in the philosophy of the character, right? We just want them there to ask the questions that the audience would naturally want to ask. Next slide, please. So again, we're not gonna watch this video right now, but if you pause it, pause this video and go watch Close Encounters from Saturday Night Live, any of them, uh, let's say specifically the one with um, Ryan Reynolds. That's, is that his name? Mm, I don't know. I don't know those guys. Ryan Gosling? 
Yes, that one. Ryan uh, Gosling. One of the Ryans. <laughs> yes, one of the Ryans. Go specifically watch the one with Ryan Gosling and then come back. Let's pause. And we are back again. These pauses are great. Um, so in this one, the character is Kate McKinnon. She's sitting there in the back of her seat, smoking a cigarette, um, talking about, there are three people talking about uh, their um, their experience getting lifted up into the sky by aliens. Ryan Gosling and Cecily Strong say they had a beautiful, eye-opening, godly experience, whereas Kate McKinnon said, oh, that's not, that's not what I experienced. I had a weird old time. Um, she's the character, right? Whereas the voices of reasons are pretty much everyone else. It's the two FBI agents behind the desk kind of asking, really? And uh, to a smaller, less, uh, to a lesser degree, the other two people that went up into the alien spaceship with her that did not have the same odd experience. Because in the base reality here, the base reality is that aliens are real. And for the most part, they bring you up there to have a, an eye-opening good time. Um, let's go on to the next slide. So I have some, um, we're coming to the end here. Uh, these are some shows, an incomplete list of uh, where to find sketches um, from I Think You Should Leave on Netflix, Saturday Night Live, which we're all probably familiar with, a Black Lady sketch show, Key and Peele, which used to be on Comedy Central, but I believe now is on Hulu. Um, these are great resources. There is more sketch comedy out there than um, uh, you might realize, and it's all really great. And I specifically recommend Astronomy Club. They are fantastic. Um, could we go on to the next slide, please? There are a couple books that I want to recommend, but one in particular, um, which I believe um, all but the middle one are available at the LA Public Library right now. Um, but comedy writing for late night TV is a great resource um, specifically for sketch writing um, and more specifically for uh, if you're interested in a career in sketch writing or late night writing, monologue jokes, etc. This um, really answers a ton of those questions. Um, how, uh, I'm getting a question here, how would someone even get a shot to get a right a writing job on SNL? Is there a process or do you have to know someone? That's a good question. So unfortunately, like the world of writing in general is just like so absolutely mystical. There are a couple ways. Sometimes SNL just um, has an open call. They'll have um, like an email that you can just literally send your writing packets to. Writing packets consist of three to five sketches and some other joke materials depending on the year. Um, agents and managers usually have direct access um, where because SNL doesn't really want um, or any of those shows don't really allow direct access um, without representation. Um, also, if you go, uh, can we go to the next slide? Um, uh, these schools have um, pretty good contact with Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live and have good sketch writing programs that can gear you towards a uh, potential, potential career in comedy. We have the Upright Citizens Brigade in Los Angeles, the Second City Hollywood, which also they exist in Chicago and Toronto. Ooh, excuse me. Um, the Groundlings, which is the school where like Kristen Wiig, Will Ferrell have come out of, um, also here in LA. Um, they have sh those three schools have um, showcases even. Um, other schools where you might be able to get the training, but not necessarily the direct access. Um, I, because I'm actually unsure, maybe the PAC does, but um, but they are a great school for sketch writing, and uh, a lot of fun people are studying there and teaching there right now, including John Milheisner, uh, who was a performer on Saturday Night Live. He teaches a character class there. Uh, and I included Improv Hawaii, which is the, the school I teach at, which um, the classes are uh, often available online, where I teach the six-week version of this, uh, where we're not uh, running through fast, 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 fast. Um, so let's say for, we're not going to go through the following videos, but let's like scroll to the next slide for the people watching the video in the future. So um, an exercise, if you want to do this on your own, um, the, in the following three videos, um, kind of see if you can figure what, out these three questions. What is the base reality? What is the game, which is the re repeatable, unusual thing? And 
I that should say who is the care. Uh, oh yeah, what is the characters or the world's justification or philosophy? Uh, and can we just go to the next couple slides so that people can go to them? Substitute Teacher by Key and Peele is a great one to look at. Next one, uh, A Witch Hunt in Black Salem by Astronomy Club, which is on Netflix or on YouTube. And finally, last one, The Actress, Saturday Night Live, um, which is with Emma Stone. And if you go to the last slide, um, uh, these are all the video sources on one document, um, which I've vetted through in a, a show game and everything that we've talked about today. And with that, we've hit our quick 55 minutes out of the 45 minutes allotted. Um, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> I almost closed out of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great, Chris. We're so sorry about the videos, man. They are on top of it. No, you know what? It turns out that it was probably for the better in terms of time, so people can sort of just uh, we we well, wrapping up when we should. Yeah, yeah I, li I like the way that you went on commercial break and then just you know came back, <laughs> and collected yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do have to say the ice cream video or the part we watched, I was like, that was a mood. Imagine that's exactly. Mm -mm. I, I was still uh, waiting for you to sing that song, Patty. So man, I don't know. Next time, next time I will sing. I was like, who sings it? And then the phrase, someone need, didn't needed to give me the lyrics. No one did. So no. next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, yeah. we are almost um, to closing, but I do have like a few questions for you. Um, so oh, yeah. I'll, um. You write sketches, I'm assuming, right? Yes, because you're teaching it. I do. <laughs> How long yeah. is the process for you? Like, if I wanted to sit down, not that I will, because I think I need more classes, but how long do I expect? Um, I mean, good question. For like a, a, a four or five page sketch, if you want to have a first draft and you're just starting out, I would give yourself two days. Um, like first day for the outline and like really fleshing out of the ideas, something that I go over in my classes and all the other schools go over that process. And then the second day to just um, dish out a first draft, but never, ever, ever is that first draft the final draft. So I've worked on sketches, like a single sketch for um, a, a month or even more. Okay, wow. I was expecting like, you have, you, it takes you a month. Well, it would it take me like a whole year to write one? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Steve, do you have a question or? You yeah, uh, no, I, uh, I, like you have any uh, parting advice uh, for somebody just starting out, um, you know, gets, you know, like a real quick, you know, little thing that you can tell people, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, I uh, you know, some advice on writing your first sketch. Yeah, I would say um, if uh, one, get in the class if you can. Um, I. I barely, barely touch the surface of what sketch writing is and can be. Um, but if you can't get into class right now, uh, I'd say just watch a lot of sketches and sort of backwards, um, uh, what is that? Just sort of like figure out how the structure is built. Kind of reverse um, engineer it. Yeah, exactly, that's what I was trying to say. Reverse engineer the sketches, um, which you have the tools to do now. That's what I'm hopefully leaving you with is the tools to reverse engineer a sketch. Um, but really uh, just trust what you think is funny. The things that you laugh with with your friends are gonna be the best thing that you can write about. Like you're not gonna be able to intellectually come up with a new kind of humor or um, fall into someone else's style of humor. What you find funny with you and your friends or you and your family is what is going to work best. That's solid advice. I mean, me and Steve are always laughing, right, Steve? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how funny a sketch would be, though. Oh, man. Yeah. It would be great. It would be yeah. great. Bye. I mean, we winged all of this, right? Especially because we couldn't. We were ready. We were ready to pop up and do some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got plenty of space. I could have, you know, no. done something. All right, and then one last question, because um, I think this would be a fun one. When you're writing your sketches, do you have like a to-go character that you're always like gonna use or wanna use? I don't even know if that makes sense, but yes, that. Um, I don't, but there. Um, if ever I'm stuck, I um, I will rename the characters as like my best friends, because I know how they speak. And so I can imagine how my friends might react to a situation. And then I can kind of have more fun with that if-then thing that I was talking about, right? Like, if 
my friend Kirsty would react this way, then she would also probably react this way to it. It makes it a little easier when you're feeling stuck. But do I have like a go-to character or anything? Um, no, maybe um, maybe just being angry. Maybe that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's another mood, man. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, well, yeah, thank you very much, Chris, for joining, uh, you know, for, you know, giving your, uh, your presentation on, you know, sketch comedy. Um, lots of stuff that we can go back and look at. And, and uh, thank you everybody else uh, for joining us for today's LA Made program. Remember to check out the uh, library's online calendar at lapl.org slash events. Please join the summer reading challenge started this week, which um, collect points for reading and completing fun learn based activities or learning based activities. Go to lapl.org slash summer for more information and to register. Uh, you won't want to miss our next LA, our, our LMA program on Saturday, June 26th at 11 a.m. It's a conversation between Hanif Abdurraqib and Courtney Lilly. Abdurraqib is a New York Times bestselling author, and he will be in conversation with uh, Courtney Lilly, head writer of the television show Blackish. Uh, we're letting you know now so you can put it in your calendars. You can join us. It'll be a great time. We truly support all your, uh, we truly appreciate all your support and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.